کامر چوبات دیدی مادل با موسولیستویس می‌وارد داده برود که کلیویتی سنتری اوبانیس ثانا دام پودز نبلی زوجیت که اینگانس او که آخس اطلاعاتی چون از پلتفرم از تندک او شیره بید اوبانی ای کلیوس تپیلیسیس کاموسا خوله باس میس نشان کاره ماست لاند شابتس چون گو آخس رامودنی میمر طوله با اساریس کلیویتی میمر طوله با ساعت اون تیملو میمر طوله با ساجارو پروگراما دا تیپرولی کارتوگرافیا روملیس ناتی لبریو پریزنتاسیات که وقتی هت آم کامو پنی ساخت روملیت که دا دا توالیرت اسه و چون گواکس پیزیکوری سیورت پتریاشولی زود داد خنومرشی روم از سوی خنپت ساموش آوت دا چون کمیت بیبلیوتکاس کالکس تپیلیز و اگرایبت سیگنپس کلای وبس دانش رومپس دا گویندارم از بیبلیوتکام او پروخل میشه تو دومی دخیا گاختس خالقیس تویس دا کالکیس کلای واره بیست تویس راستن دکاو شیر بیتات س اطلاعاتی است که ما واقعی نبود این مدیگو کاخلو ما موالشی چون از سویال ور مدیاشی اینستاگرام ز فیس بوک ز دا چون از وب کوئرت ز اوبانی دوت کم از اینکه اوبانی اگر ز لپس تا ویس ساجارو پروگراماس خونی زیاد بیت که بیت از خلبی دام درست چون است اوماریا آرکیتکتوری لیسابونیس سکولیس آرکیتکتوری سکولیس دکتر انتی دام کلیواری آندریا گارسیا روملیتی ساوبرپس هیدروپولیتیکا زه دام تکرار از خلبیس نشونه لبازه کالکش از تیم او کاوشیر دیبا تبلیسی سرکیتکتوریس بیانالیس تلوان دل تیماس شدتون بیس کاستوره با دا جدیبا میس مات پارالیلوری خونیز دیه بیس پروگراماشی. دا مدلو امیدا موخادو پینالیس کونس تانم شنو بلو بیستویس. اسوه مدلو امیدا موخادو کینو ساخلیس کونس تانم شنو بلو بیستویس دا ماس پینز لو بیستویس. اخلا انگلیس و رینازه او بانستان دام پوزنه بلی نتا تاتونا شویلی که اکرد سیلیب ستیدی مدلو با های تو افریوان داتو جست میده سمال انترودکشن و اگن اباوت بانی اباوت وات وی دیو ار مین دیمنشنز اف ورک ویچ ایس ریسرچ پبلک پروگرام ادوکیشنال و پبلشنگ And um, from the start of it, we wanted our theme and our work to be as wider as possible, not only architecture, but everything that is urban form of Tbilisi, starting with landscape, of course. And uh, from the start, we wanted to make theme broader and connecting different disciplines and different spheres of knowledge and work to talk about the thing that is city and our Tbilisi now, to make it um, more variable dimensions. And um, that's how, you know, you, of course, everything that is urban form of Tbilisi, it's starting with the landscape. That's why we dedicate our first year of our program to the landscape. And we are trying to make different 
projects, uh, events of public program, researches and workshops, trying to cope this theme from as many ways and directions as possible. And uh, you have saw now the small exhibition of the workshop that was done by students from University College London. And uh, it's very interesting that none of them were architects. It was actually very multidisciplinary theme from different spheres of science that try to uh, implement their technical skills to do some new ways of data visualizations that we don't have for the city and to in this way to see like one more direction of <coughs> exploring our landscape and when we and our team members were in Venice in last architectural Biennale, we were really mesmerized by Portuguese pavilion, where we saw all those different approaches. And at the same time, this explicit and strong way of dealing with the theme of thinking about landscape, land, natural resources, and our connection to it and our relation to it. That's when we felt exactly that it matches absolutely our vision and our will of how we would love to do it. So that was a match, absolutely. And that was the day when we wanted to invite Andrea Garcia, the curator of that project, to come to Tbilisi to share and to tell you more about it, because we assume not all of us could be there, but bringing that amazing work here was very um, important for us. So thank you and please welcome our guest, Andrea. So good evening. It's really an absolute pleasure to be here with you. Um, first and foremost, uh, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the team of Urbani Center team uh, extended um, this invitation to be here after Venice. And uh, personally, I would like to uh, special to give a special thank to uh, Nata and Julia uh, because actually they were spending the last days of this week with me, trying to show me and to fit me in their work schedule uh, in a very brave way. So I'm really amazed by the way you share everything and so much with me and you care me. So, uh, and also, I would like to thank you uh, to find some time of your day to be here and to uh, listen what I have to say. So, um, this is all that matters to share. Uh, when talking about Fortal Futures exhibition, that is the name of our uh, Portuguese representation, and after the context of the Portuguese uh, representation at this 18th um, International Biennale in Venice, now we are here in Tbilisi. So, um, it's important to say that under the umbrella of this um, power edition of Tbilisi Architecture Biennale that I had the chance to see uh, during this week, um, there is a lot of common narratives with Fertile Future Exhibition, what was the pavilion of Georgia uh, this last year, and also uh, this Biennale that you can find it here in the city. And I use this opportunity to highlight the importance of the directors and um, the creators who stand to raise their voices, to call attention on the topic, and um, also to, to bring some hope, um, making new questions to this common goal that somehow expect to correct mistakes, as, um, as you can say. And um, yeah, I can conclude that we have the same aims. And for that, I would like uh, that this communication today contribute to, to bring uh, maybe greater visibility and join myself and in the near future, uh, my team uh, that were more than two, 2000, uh, 200, 230 people um, to amplify this public 
um, discussion concerning what is at stake when we are dealing with such important issue as water, electricity production and decarbonation, uh, both locally and globally. Also, um, it's important to say that normally I say that the rivers are the most beautiful description of the earth and about how we all um, live, uh, how all the species organize themselves. And I found this beautiful magazine that starts with a beautiful text entitled Lines, Threads and Traces from Tim Ingold. And I quote him in English today. Um, so he said, he wrote, Today, when we speak of lines, it is most often to such a sequence that we refer. Line thinking, we say, goes from point to point, linear transport from location to location, linear time from moment to moment. Indeed, and I did a shortcut here to what I want to say, um, what he said. Indeed, what we witness today is not the birth, but the death of the line. To reduce a linear movement to a rigid sequence of fixed points is to drain it of vita, uh, vitality, of everything that gives it life and growth. For the living world, in truth, is not connected like net, but a writing mesh of lines. So, for me, this can be a beautiful and precise description of water lines, their traces, their threats imposed on them. But that is what for, um, we are here, right? So it's for exactly uh, inspired by also what Urbani do and this um, also metaphorical suggestion of their logo that we can see here. We can create bridges to connect ourselves with the earth, with the spaces, with the other species in the horizontal way, a non situation. And instead to use bridge to perpetuate the demonstration of power, to block who passes under it, we should create bridges to connect. So the structure of the talk I prepared uh, for today circles around the main strands, uh, highly illustrative of the, this laboratorial methodology uh, we use in the Fertile Future project. Um, so today I will try to contribute for this discussion, supported by some of the um, conceptualization and imagining paths for, uh, in order to try to reparative, uh, to build more reparative futures um, that we try since January 2023, um, develop with, uh, with our team. So, um, yeah, we are talking about pointing some of the main struggles for land, access to water, and of course, social, economical, and political conflicts. The first trend for today uh, springs from a quote for a pan-African revolutionary and agronomist, Amilcar Cabral. Uh, he was presented to me by Margarida um, Waku, one of our consultants, which I quote, to defend the earth is the most if, uh, efficient way of defending mankind. In my reading, these words seem to seek of the strong idea of ecological bodies. And when I speak of uh, ecologies and ecological bodies, I speak of both human and non-human bodies. Echoing the words of Imani Jacqueline Brown, ecologies are an assemblage of uh, integral relationships between bodies. There are bits of matter and energy uniting to become humans and microbes, to become ponds and planets, and to become communities and worlds. So as a vital element for human and non-human species, but also as metaphorical and emotional, fresh water is simultaneously political and economic, which is why public debate on the protection, management, and the future of this resource is so urgent. For this uh, official representation, um, official Portuguese representation at, uh, at the last International Architecture Exhibition, La Biennale di Venezia, um, we present Fertile Future, was a project that I had the honor and the privilege to, to create, and also uh, with the deputy curators, Zena Neiva and Diogo Guiar, 
Um, and with a team that I said that increased during the laboratorial process. And it was focused on the problems of the water sources, as was said in the, in the presentation, to stimulate thought about first, uh, fertile, sustainable and equitable future. So what we did is we focused on seven hydrogeographies and we commissioned young architects in collaboration with experts from other fields of knowledge to present uh, models for a more sustainable future in this non hierarchical cooperation between disciplines, generations and species, as I said before. So the seven cases under study exemplify um, in a very well uh, manner the anthropocentric action on water uh, natural and finite uh, resources, as we know, with implications in seven regions of Portugal that we call hydrogeographies. And they are called uh, Temga Basin, uh, the International Douro, the Middle Tagus, the Alqueva Dam, the Miri River, the Lagoa das Sete Cidades, and the Madeira Rivers. So, um, in in somehow, some way, fertile futures try and intend to express this understanding of the laboratorial future that was the general theme proposed by Leslie Loco for this Biennale, which called for um, a methodological perspective and exploratory uh, program simultaneously clear and complex based on this laboratory and um, collaborative uh, tea dynamics. The title of Fertile Futures underlines the speculative character of this uh, representation. It's very different from normally what we have. Normally the Portuguese pavilion presents the star architect. So the star system that is already somehow uh, in a privileged uh, position, already, already worldwide uh, known and um, uh, entitled by a lot of uh, awards also. So somehow uh, this program defends a process, a process that called for this laboratorial dimension, um, an architectural design in dialogue with other fields of knowledge as the only way to work the ability to move forward, seeking to imagine the future, requiring the contribution of multidisciplinary discourses in design of solutions to emerging issues to tend to go beyond a singular domain of the work of architects. So while discussing and uh, proposing strategies for the management, protection and transformation of fresh water and contributing to a debate that is common and global, Fertile Futures focus on the scarcity and management of this resource in a Portuguese territory, but in order to help um, or in order to be uh, receiving help of international consultants. Um, so investing in this strategic complementary between practice, theory and teaching in architecture, um, we, pre pre we present a kind of a tripartite uh, approach of experimentation and common reflection that was defined by hydrogeography workshops that in the end was the result that you were able to see in Venice. Uh, so it was the beginning of the laboratorial process that in the end was the work exhibited there. Five assemblies of thought um, that were moments of this reciprocal learning or relearning based on coexistence of knowledge that in the end were seven. Um, and one uh, international summer seminar where students from all around the world collect collectively rehearse speculativity, uh, speculative site-specific propositions. So at this moment, we are, as we know, in the midst of six mass extinction, the last one having occurred millions of years ago, when the dinosaurs were whipped off the face of the earth. And in this context, this moment, water, if not contaminated, can be both an element of survival and destruction. What we have been experienced and which will worsen are extreme weather phenomena, which water in winter causes destruction through flooding and soil erosion, and in the summer causes destruction through compl uh, complete drought, causing dis uh, disruption not only in access to water by people, but also increasingly in food production itself. Therefore, 
This terrible balance between excess and the absence of water is exactly the type of problem that we have to solve through new logics of retention, maintenance, management and circular uh, use of water at all levels. And we are currently focused on this idea of eliminating uh, carbon dioxide uh, emissions by 2050. And for now, this is also, as we know, a, a wishful thinking or a magical thinking, since we are facing a near impossibility, both technical and scientific. We also say that everything has to change because our problems go far beyond climate change and have to do with the way we structure our society and with the popular notion of the Anthropocene, which many prefer to identify as Capitalocene. As a thinker, Frederick Jameson put it, it's easier to imagine the end of the world than to imagine the end of the capitalism. To accommodate the scale of change needed, we must review our social and economical systems. If we want to safeguard the survival of parts of the human population, as well as non-human populations on the planet. So, does the known human is also an essential problem to be included in the issue of water, especially when in the field of architecture one finally starts taking, uh, talking about design or interspecies design projects? Based on local involvement with um, uh, the real specificities of these uh, territory uh, dispersed hydrogeographies, the propositions uh, or the propositional solutions under the development in this hydrogeography workshop aim to promote forms of global action as well as discussion of new ways of operating at the territorial scale as well as at the small scale. So right now, I will uh, start to present each one of the seven, let's say, um, beginning phases of this laboratorial process. The water of Temegabazin, uh, once the heart of uh, all the irrigated land, uh, is today the primary source for one of Europe's largest green hydro energy plants. The Tamaga Electro Producer System, also known as Giga Battery, has brought significant change to the region. By demonstrating the contrast between two ways of managing water as a local and common asset and as a commercial product for creating energy, this team creates a hydro methodology from space transcribers with Alvaro Domingues, a geographer, and um, realize through critical spatial experimentation a combination of uh, immersive analysis with a performative place, uh, place as an uh, architect uh, architectonic, let's say, architectonic proposition to reimagine the concept of uh, the common in the management of Tamaga water. Common. So again, the link to your um, Biennale here right now. So the analytic research they present, which is here donated as a Tamaga hypertext, um, enhance the contrast and connections between different hydro architectures in the region. The discipline ways, the distinctive also ways in which the water is management, managed is how it relates to human and non-humans. So by drawing uh, those hydro artifacts and also making the play tour, um, that they performed and in March, so before the opening. Um, we could say that w they create a kind of poetic methodology which seeks to reconciliate themselves or ourselves with the extincting, um, and we, with the extincting elements, uh, but with the existing tension surrounded um, and surrounding water while also unco uncovering paths that lead to the design of dialogues that look forward to more collective futures over the Temega and beyond. The investigation, uh, the second one, focused also on international Doru. That is a region emblematic of the relationship of this dependency of sharing that um, exists between Portugal and Spain. So they share water 
but they share the water if they are not in need of water. So sometimes they don't respect, when I say they, I'm talking about Spain. <laughs> they don't respect the, um, the convention. Uh, and we could say that this somehow underlines the relevance of water in soil and ecosystem conservation beyond um, its mere use as an energy source and an essential good for human consumption. So by Dulcinea Santos Studio, this laboratory uh, presents a vision for the preservation of fresh water and uh, they reencountered the, through the roots of these ash trees over which ceramic pieces uh, were shaped to reveal the invisible body of the ground, uh, drawn uh, here by the means of uh, surrogate as a carpet of earth. Um, so the ground, they say, is this reservoir of the future for water and life, a living mineral and organic conceptual where the roots of the trees, these ash trees, intertwine in a dialogue of complementary shapes which decelerate, spread and infiltrate the water. We can say that it is a complex and intelligent system, sponge-like and steaming from the forces of different cohabiting ecosystems in the struggle for food and reproduction of species. So the ground as a reservoir is a lesson from International Doru Laboratory to other places and serves as evidence that only local, uh, shared and multidisciplinary knowledge can interpret and recognize the potential of a piece of ground, what is made of and what it needs. So maybe less carbon and more planting hash trees. The third uh, laboratory, the impact of mining industry is plain to see in the region of Middle Tejo. I'm sure you also are struggling with some uh, similar issues. Um, so, um, not least in the widespread contamination of the water in the Zezru River, in the surrounding water tables uh, that that are provoked by those leftovers of this the extractivism, and um, the detection of the high levels of heavy metals above the World Healthy uh, Health Organization's uh, recommended um, that it is particularly grave development at uh, a time when the proposes transfer in be is being considered to increase the flow of Tejo River, those uh, guarantee water supply in the Lisbon metropolitan area because this river is somehow um, uh, the one that serves this region. So architecture is done by means of manifestos and Guida Marques is a performer, an activist and a, um, an architect. And uh, she has a strong relationship and a strong proximity and intimacy with this territory and what this territory expressed through um, herself, her body, um, her written um, and performed records which are sensitive to the past and concerned for the future in the urgence of such a new world endeavor. So the sharing strives to unite mechanisms and shapes and to build memories, concerns and anguish to sensitize um, the thought and the body of those who read or hear, who can see uh, as a way to say that the world also builds and the body is also a place. The fourth one, um, and connected with this idea of sharing sensitivity, affection, somehow is can be reactivated. Here in Alkeva Reservoir, um, I don't know if you know, if someone of you know, is a very touristical uh, place but this is also responsible for the extreme transformation that uh, is, has been occurring in, in this landscape. So, um, you know, we know that it is uh, dry land or irrigated, but the creation of this uh, larger artificial lake in Europe, uh, it's, and uh, let's say, brings this point of 
um, important issue on the table because it's water enables emergent, uh, emergent energy needs to be met, um, stimulates tourism and above all contributes to the high levels of productivity in the incumbent agribusiness which is simultaneously responsible for the contamination and over exploration of the soil. So, fictionally, in a kind of a near future, um, Francisco Pedres, uh, from, from this uh, studio, he somehow uh, call himself to a future where he meet with himself, and he understood that um, the reservoir uh, exists, and uh, somehow he, it was forest abundant with preserved in a very well, uh, unique way, its characteristics. Vegetation was uh, mental formed, uh, so it was somehow visible that the vegetation was capable of holding these quantities of water um, in the lake. So they built this uh, artifact, uh, they, they call artifact for the regeneration of the soil, and uh, their invention somehow in constructed by built by the the studio uh, thought um, the use of agro industry waste and it transformed into thermal energy um, in the, into thermal energy hydrogen and coal and enables uh, the purification of water and the production of biofertilizers so this robust response of social and environmental regeneration by means of the simple and enduring action of humans in the large scale uh, somehow reposition uh, them as a conscious element of um, also generation of fertility. The sixth uh, example, the Mira River is surrounded by a wide irrigation perimeter currently dominated by exogenous investments and interest imposed on established farming models of smaller scale or ambition. So taking advantage of these pre-existent uh, networks, highly farms and contribute to unequal access to water resources, this aqueduct, uh, as well as the soil and water contamination through the use of acceleration of agrochemicals, uh, this studio work uh, with exactly this architecture of water, this aqueduct, and understood that this, um, his mission, his aim, uh, was not being uh, used for. So at the same time, this project somehow uh, aimed to bring more visibility to the super exploration of migrants, uh, workers, hidden agents and also subjects to precarious working and housing conditions. So accepting that somehow architecture is um, totally inability to find a solution to, the, to this complex problem, um, they decided to build a denouncement installation. So they proposed um, its own poetic dimension, intends to raise a global uh, awareness of social, ecological, administrative, and also economic issues under uh, the debate. So this symbol, um, this symbol of this desirable democratic distribution of water through the territory and the uh, population that inhabits it, this aqueduct, once incomplete, broken and fragmented highlights its own dysfunctionality and propos uh, proposalsness. This beautiful place, Lagoa das Sete Cidades in Azores, is the largest natural freshwater reservoir in the archipelago of Azores and also one of the seven natural wonders of Portugal. Um, but despite being romanticized, romanticized, the livestock farming is responsible for the acceleration, degradation of ecosystems in the basin territory and in the water of the lake. Excessive use of fertilizer or fertilizers for pastures gives rise to a process that is called eutrophization or eutrophication. A process causing significant emissions of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as well as deterioration of the bio 
physical, chemical balance of water, making its use unfeasible. And to restore this water quality, uh, the proposed model consider considers removing the pollution element of the lagoons from the territory, uh, why in all impact in the coordinated interdisciplinary approach in order to ensure more sustainable opportunities. The granary, as we see, as you see here, uh, is a Portuguese people know because it's recognized as an element that is part of uh, the vernacular architecture of this place, of this uh, island, and is they propose to take out of the context uh, to house the symbol of the agricultural industry, and they propose to um, that this granary somehow will take out from the contact of the floor of the earth the cow. So the cow is uh, responsible of contamination. This archetype is traditionally identified as the um, protector of these agricultural goods from the ground. And somehow here find this ironically proposed that is totally inverted to protect the territory from the harmful effects of agriculture. I love the dog. So, um, well, this is what we are talking about in our last example. Hey, you. Yes, we need to protect them. So uh, the repeated occurs, uh, occurrence of these flash uh, floods in Madeira, in Madeira Island streams highlights the price to be paid for rapid and unplanned urbanization of our territory, aggravated by the increasingly frequent peaks of precipitation as a result of climate change, whose increased uh, responsibility also lies with the underbridled construction sector a large source of carbon emissions. So the challenge implies critical reflection on the trauma associated with these events, developed a hypothesis for the revitalization of water lines, now heavily artificial, thus recovering the resilience lost in the meantime. From a critical reinterpretation this, of these material streams, uh, Four expectant acts evoke four temporalities that signal transformations in Madeira streams as a result of this anthropocentric action. action. So as I said in the beginning, and just to don't take too much time, um, Fertile Future also um, aimed the second phase of this laboratorial and research methodology um, consist in bringing our subject of discussion in the, into the interior region of Portugal, in a city called Fundão, with the same uh, teams um, working with um, 80 students from all around the world for two weeks to consider the future of this area threatened to um, and by the shortage of uh, fresh water. And the group coordinated by space transcribers proposed to explore storytelling as an instrument of architectural practice capable of imagining spatial and critical scenarios for the future of the built environment. The performance was called Auto da Barca de Janeiro de Cima, that is somehow a reinterpretation of a very uh, known um, poem, Portuguese poem. And uh, they delivered on the river beach of Janeiro de Cima, between the banks of Zez River, um, during these two weeks investigation, a sought to uh, unravel and somehow forge the links between this um, uncertain present and this fictional future. Also based on the observation of the complete path, and we go back to the idea of line, um, this line of the movement of the water line, uh, worked by Dulcinea Center Studio Group, developed this um, un unlearned designing the line. And they were using uh, drawing as a way, as a manner to express, explore the different uh, qualities of the soil and sought to make participants fully aware of the power of water in the construction of sustainable and biodiverse uh, spaces that can be used 
by the Fundão community. In Cabeço do Peão, the workshop Repair, led by Guida Marx, proposed the creation of a place of experimentation through the development of actions that make us more aware of our individual role in the world. So through the company's um, own process, this performance art, um, the participants sought to explore the relationship with water, with rurality, ancestry and the future. Pedrez developed the experimental workshop Electro Texture, which sought to understand and investigate the relationship between architecture and electromagnetism through uh, experiments in agricultural seeking to reduce freshwater consumptions. In the end, you can't see here, but um, there were uh, 49 vases installation with flowers, which occupies one of the uh, with seeds, not flowers, which occupies one of the playing uh, fields of the seminar and um, is now an experimental laboratory in progress for the next um, years, I hope, because during the, uh, the forward months, the flowers um, are raised. Sorry. And last but not least, Beatrice uh, is a woman's name, but is also the name that was attributed by this straw staircase located in a fluvial island of Janeiro de Cima, which are symbolically and intermediary between the human being and the way of seeing the world between the immediate and the imaginary landscape. So there, suggesting somehow uh, that we need to see what is not visible and what still uh, is not visible doesn't mean that don't, doesn't exist, don't exist. Now, the last. In Fundão Seminar also, Ponto Atelier sought to trace uh, um, the traces, I mean, of uh, pre-existent um, uh, element in order to understand what transformed the way um, to manage water somehow. So through a collaborative um, if effort inspired by a pre-existent fountain that was behind this element and it was dried, the workshop four built a water mirror which raised in the middle of the courtyard and connect the four entrances, rewriting the symbolic and spiritual uh, value of water and establish a new center of meeting among different cultures and generations. It's important to say that this building is a migrant center and the migrants uh, were also participating in this workshop. Now the last one. From the empirical analysis of this place, um, uh, Ileo uh, Studio uh, sought to identify the manifestation of human representation of water in this area. So they materialize these, um, these elements that represent emotional experience um, of the group in relation with this specific place. To flow instead of being stone is the name of uh, another, um, is a title of another poem by Eugenio Dendrad. And they try to explore the interstices between individual and collective memory and develop a site specific installation from, from uh, five monolithic objects designed uh, for the river uh, beach, um, that is what is called by Castel Novo. Almost finishing this presentation, um, I would like to remember you. Our water is a beautiful descriptor of how humans organize themselves. This is an Atacama, Chile. And uh, in the face of growing overpopulation, the climate crisis and resources scarcity, our story and the reason why this planet is facing those problems should serve as a reminder of our ability to shape the build environment, and also the ability to destroy it. Well, you can find more about the pavilion in our website. Also in the two books that are available in Ubani Garage Library. Uh, and also you can't visit anymore this exhibition in Palazzo Franchetti, but you can still come to Portugal and visit uh, in Archipelago in Azores Island in Portugal. 
It was very intense. I was reading. I'm sorry for that, but I feel responsible to pass the message of uh, actually the ones that create all this that are not here. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much. And, you know, I'm really emotional, emotionally overwhelmed with all those thoughts that you provoked by this talk. And not like a question, more, more that I wanted to share and maybe you could react because, um, you know, it's so um, really intense, as you said, uh, all those um like disastrous trends that we have all around uh with our nature and um, uh, some examples that you and we all may have seen uh, in the exhibition of Tbilisi architectural biennale that is going on right now and everyone each of us has his own um, experience of seeing it with our own eyes of those disastrous trends that we have, starting from those sh shrinking um, ices um, and um, dried out rivers and the floods and everything. And it's really frightening how similar all those examples are in such a different regions of the world that we share, like Europe, Americas, our region, and everywhere, basically. And at, these are like all the consequences of making like maybe our bad decisions, like our, as a humanity, like those that I talked before, more indirect ways, but the others that this Biennale is dedicated to some direct uh, damage that uh, humanity did in previous like 20th century of the year of this harsh industrial interventions into landscape and that we see now. And all those things and also when we see some reasons of those disasters in these days like those capitalism to just uh, combine all of them and uh, you also started when you're um, in the beginning of your speech you said that this also sounds something that is inevitable that you cannot turn it down the capitalism as well so all those things they make us feel so helpless about it and at the same time when I'm starting to thinking to think about this from my perspective, like I uh, mostly mm, think of myself as an architect in the first role, and uh, you talk about these things and curate those projects as an architect, and it seems like when you tell about all these examples of projects that we architects took down our this really proactive invasive invasive role of building transforming taming nature and we now like find our solitude in mm, and we do it consciously to maybe more like artistical poetic reflections or even contemplation and does it feel like useless in some way and I even was like sad when I came to this thought but then I had the whole loop you know <laughs> and then I ended up that we as an architect maybe do like taking over this method this laboratory method that you were talking about today uh, from taming and invading our environment in a built way, in like concrete way, in the metal or stone way, we uh, took our, take our role as working with minds and inspiration and um, like starting this change 
not to nature and environment, but to us as humanity through transforming this mindset. And it's kind of a transformation, the huge transformation that our profession has. So I just wanted to maybe react on that in a way. Thank you. Thank you. Can I can I comment? No, thank you for 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 the comment. Uh, I I would like that uh, even though it looked dramatic and it is, I would like to keep some uh, hope. I won't say romanticism or romanticism. I will say hope because otherwise it's better to give up now. Uh, that's why I think we keep. Ubani, we keep uh, creating, thinking, writing, teaching, uh, because we do have hope in the future generations in order to uh, bring some other perspective on what we, it's need to do, to be done. So um, I do think that, uh, I, I do believe uh, that even though uh, it's really hard, almost, I must say, impossible to end with the capitalism. Um, I strongly believe that this is the reason why we are here uh, today uh, talking about this issue because this is the base of everything. And when I start this project, of course I had my own research before, but it was immediately um, uh, almost as a rule that I shouldn't be, um, I shouldn't have the, the lack of rationality, of reality, of um, humility to say that the architects were in power to change what has to be changed, because we don't. Um, of course, we can use architecture as a political tool, as a political voice. And that is what this uh, project is raised for. So the idea was to uh, mostly to call the attention on the topic. Because again, as this is of course a huge window do, uh, doing a Biennale um, in Venice, at least we wanted to say that the architecture, ar uh, the Portuguese architecture was much more than awards, much more than building is nowadays calling and recalling the architects as in the previous time to all times to say that actually we need to be in the center of the discussion we need to be to recall ourselves to position ourselves in the center of this discussion and to be part of the solution we don't have solutions alone that's why the, inter the, the interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary or multidisciplinary uh, team because it's the only way to at least to talk because if if and sometimes this during this week we we were talking about this if we are able to sit and to talk just to ourselves, then what? what? What is the result? So I think we are on the same page here on that, is try to, uh, to call attention, and how can we call attention? It's not with very technical uh, and specifically uh, drawings of solutions, because th there is not a technical solution for, because there is not a technical problem. Is a political problem? Is a uh, is a society problem? Is a uh, economical problem? So this is what raised the main question. So the idea was this: was to call the attention, to bring and give visibility for that, and mainly to call the new generations, the youngest generations, for the project. That's why the projects, the studio selected were uh, young practices and then the project that is the second phase of the project with the students from all around the world that apply for the scholarship because it was everything like organized for them to receive to for the trip for, for the travel and for this these two weeks uh, workshop and in the end the result and sometimes there are some more let's say classic people uh, that ask but is this architecture, this electrotecture uh, system, or uh, is this architecture, this movement that is not anymore the Corbusier, uh, like sticked in one position, our bodies in movement, 
trying to manif manifest this idea of caring and to take care and to uh, observe at the same time. So, um, or is this architecture? Is this is a beautiful uh, metaphor of uh, to to point it out where the problem is based. Is in this idea uh, or yeah this main idea that we are not distributing well the water. So it's a kind of very symbolic way. And inside this, uh, this artifact, there is a bowl, a small bowl. It, it is a reinterpretation of something that was used before. As there were different other solutions, this group made 25 <laughs> uh, objects like this. And there's a, a connection of uh, somehow this with what you were able to see in the beginning of presentation when I show you, for example, this. This, this is a very technical, like not technical, very uh, metaphorical uh, approach to the idea of how they are distributing the water in a known equality way, order. So this idea is, there is a siphon, there is a, a small line in, the, in this glass. Uh, and if you, uh, somehow put more water than it's supposed to, then you will lose you will lose all the water like from the from the the back part from the top. So is this idea to learn how to share and to don't want it all? Yeah. Uh, I just uh, wanted to make a very short comment about the uh, political uh, conditions. I mean, because we are talking about capitalism, but in our context, in Georgia, uh, the disaster of our kind of like uh, natural resources, the uh, using them and destroying the uh, di uh, like to st when this industrialization started, it's more connected to the social state, which was like Soviet Union. So, but now uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, it's even got more and more complicated. But I just wanted to say that um, even in the socialist. Uh, 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 conditions and the st political like conditions of, I mean, it was the same. Uh, so maybe it's not a, uh, what do you think? I mean, like what kind of like political, uh, I don't know, uh, which, what, what is the solution? Uh, not, I, I mean, I understood that like it's really, really important to educate ourselves and to change the generations and everything, but what kind of like political regime might be uh, for you like more uh, re re i don't know how to say like to to respond to this kind of like questions which is really i think it's very important that we are on the both sides of the discussion uh, i'm not political uh, or a politician even if there are people yeah. in the in the group that are exactly on the same so they have the power to complain and then the power to take part on the on actually the policies that are being ruled or designed for what is going on the thing is i, I can't of course i if i was if i had a solution i will give you <laughs> freely <laughs> and we can build a new world the thing is this is not new and this is not uh, we can we can count the increasingly the increase of of this problem um, after uh, the uh, the industrial war so the industrial moment when when everything start to be of course much more um, uh, let's say um, based on this economical uh, system but still even before there were other ways to uh, to manage the the value and to create hierarchy hierarchies that were of course um, more interesting for always someone someone that was in power of the thing is uh, during times um, there are a lot of things that can change but what is common to all the forces in power is this um, is the need to gain more and to show more um, what somehow reinforce their voice? So of course, it's all based on capitalism. Even 
the ti with the time, even if you can negotiate, I think that is the best you can do, or we can do, is to try to make them balance. Because once, even if they have a different speech, and in Portugal we are right now facing that, even if there are some forces with a more interesting uh, speech, we know that if when uh, in power, they don't respect what they propose. So it's always like that. They can have their own uh, language that we can identify ourselves with and their values that we can uh, identify ourselves is, uh, with them. But once in power, things change because the rules are uh, based on capital. The rules are based on money. And it, the money is not just for industries, small or big industries. The money is... Uh, the, the somehow is almost a metaphor because there is no shape. It's an interest, a common interest with those industries. That, that is what is the raised for all this. So I think what is going on right now, at least in the eastern part, is that uh, we are facing really, I, uh, let's say, big struggles right now. And right now, this problem is knocking on our door. On our door. So we need to uh, control, we will need uh, to con start to control the amount of water we use per day. So now, everyone can understand what is going on. Because it's nothing that, you know, just someone is telling. And sometimes, from time to time, appear on our news um, during the day. No, it's something that is on the top of, is present, is on the top of, of the discussions, is uh, somehow um, uh, invading my, my way of living, right? So we are talking about not just hygienization, we are talking about uh, dust, we are talking about deaths, we are talking about losing uh, business. That's why the amount of climate migrants are increasing so much. Because in the, the South um, global uh, world, this problem is, is there since, since a lot. We didn't care. It was not our problem. We were, and now it's coming up, right? Like the North is, the, the winter is coming. <laughs> so is this idea that, is, there is a contamination uh, of this um, of this situation, and just now that this problem is touching our way of living, now we open up our eyes and we are aware of things that need to be changed. And of course, the I think is when uh, also the policies or the the politics uh, the politicians are in charge are waking up to say okay there is a problem we can't deny anymore even if we are in charge and I think there are some countries um, and mainly some communities inside countries that are um, somehow growing their voice uh, there are a lot of movements a lot of a lot of manifestations that are somehow calling to integrate the new policies that has to be done. At least Portugal, Spain, France, Italy, um, we are uh, much more aware. And I think globally now we deny much more this, uh, those people that were, uh, and I hope that they won't uh, be back again in charge to be negationists to say that uh, climate change don't exist. So let's 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 talk about that because if we think that in four years those students will be the ones that will be voting, also so that is to raise their political voice besides to be an architect. And they will be talking with their family. And we are talking about, about almost 90 students, and we are talking about this amount of people, and we are talking about this uh, resistance <laughs> public that stay until now. So is, is this what you are talking about? So it's like the, the media are helping, of course, they have their own interests. And of course, we need also to balance our own uh, um, reasons, because we need this soft touch, right? So we need to, ex to extract from somewhere. But let's balance, let's create rules and 
let's try to create rules that are more equal and don't put uh, in need always the same ones, no? Maybe someone has a question from the audience? No? Nana, of course. <laughs> Um, first of all, thank you so much. It was extremely interesting. Uh, I'm not an expert on water management, um, but I do come from environmental background and I specialize in waste management and uh, circular economy. So I think uh, as a practitioner in this, uh, maybe there is a, a room to discuss uh, the current economic model that we have, which is a linear economic model which doesn't work anymore, and it's um, hyper-consumerist demand that is exhausting our resources, including our demand on water. Um, and as it stands, um, by our calculations, um, right now, two Earths is not enough to um, satisfy the current demands we have on natural resources, including water. So we are... I agree with you that um, it is a question of economic model and it is a question of how this model is set up and I think here's, uh, there is a good uh, space to discuss degrowth and also circular economy and which means regenerative economy using less but using efficiently, so reusing resources as much as possible for as prolonged period um, as possible and that applies to urban water use too um, so it doesn't go to waste somehow we can circulate these resources um, and there's I, I feel like there's a lot of um, room to also consider this model in what you've been discussing but also at l with a larger um, uh, understanding of extractive industry and how we approach this. So, yeah. It's yeah, thank you. Um, you were talking and I was thinking about food. Um, in, the, in the last reports, um, European reports and worldwide reports, um, they say that statistically in 2050, um, there, it's necessary to have more uh, food production. But they don't talk about the leftovers. Because if the leftovers were uh, used, there was no need for more. So sometimes is the problem, and talking about economically approach, sometimes the, the main problem is the distribution. That it's a systemic problem. It's a completely problem with the system. And I'm glad you mentioned food waste because I specialize in food waste uh, specifically. And one third of food that is produced worldwide goes to waste without ever reaching a consumer or anyone. And it's a social problem. It's an inequality problem. It's an environmental problem. And it's an economic problem. And there's all the resources, especially water, that is used to produce any type of food, which is then absolutely not used for any purpose. So, yeah. Yeah. It's all this problem, but the solution is on the ones that are in charge. So, <laughs> we all and always go back to, yeah, to, to, yeah, to, to raise and the policies that are being applied. So, it's all about rules in an efficient, equality way. So yeah, we are on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>